Greetings viewers, another episode of Uplink is out, episode three. Uh, two main articles in it. The future issues will actually have a broader array of issues. I'm handling these as slightly smaller for now and then the scope will expand over time. Two main articles and I'll have a brief video for each of those. And so this one will be about the first article, which is about transnational revanchism. Now revanchism means going back to the past. It's a political belief system where you go back to something that you think exists or is a model. The idea is regression, you're going back to something. And this has pretty much defined the politics of the last five years across the entire planet, national government after national government. Every single major polity has been going back to the past and electing people who promise some kind of return to something, even though it's not particularly possible anymore. And we have urgent crises as a species uh, to deal with. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention about the concept of revanchism, I think it's very important for those of us who care about the future of our planet to stop and think about the history of transnational revanchism. Now, there's one history that leads back to the 1920s and 30s, and there's some important work there that we should think about. However, there's a more recent historical context, which we should also think about seriously, and that is the ways that the transnational revanchists have tried to mobilize transnational audiences. Now, we live in an age of transnational media. There are 4.2 billion people online, and they are beginning very slowly, very painfully, to exert political agency. And one of the hallmarks, one of the interesting ways this has happened is, if you think about the history, the post-2008 history, of world politics, if you step back that alien eye view, the satellite view, look at the entire Earth, you notice something interesting. 2008, the hegemony of the United States as a polity ends, and I don't mean that the United States is less of an empire, less powerful, it's just that the United States as a model, as a political, economic, and cultural model, that period of history, which was with us since 1945, ends. And we live in a world of devolution and that means that local polities now have to make decisions that used to be made on the basis of american imperial power so the united states set those ground rules in the past now the rest of the world has to kind of come up with things and that battle is what we call transnational politics and already we're we've lived through two cycles of these transnational politics these sort of post-american transnational audiences trying to make up their minds about things the first wave came after 2008 and that's that immense wave of insurrections. And these ins insurrections are very, very interesting from the Obama campaign 2008 up until Occupy, the Arab Spring uprisings, the revolutions of Rojava and Ukraine, uh, extraordinary events. And yet one of the things about them is they changed the terms of the discourse of economic society and culture, but they didn't change anything about political power or anything fundamental on the ground. So the discourse shifted and opened up to allow for some possibilities, but the actual way things ran, did anything actually change in the United States? Did a single banker responsible for the 2008 crisis go to jail under Obama? No, they all got off scot-free and they got lots of free money from the Federal Reserve. And the same thing is true. You look at the politics of China. What changed after 2008? Pretty much the same. What changes in Europe? Pretty much the same austerity. So the, the field changes, but the policies did not change. That generated a reaction, and that reaction is, of course, the post-2013 wave of revanchisms. And many of these revanchisms took political power all across the world, from Putinism to Bolsonaro in Brazil. It's everywhere these days. And they have a common history, and that is a, a rejection of the immediate past. So they demonize their predecessors and say, oh, see, that discourse brought us these bad things, and we're going to create, we're going to make Brazil great again, or whatnot. And of course, they're going to fail. Now, we've been through five, six years of the rule of these revanchisms, and they've done nothing but make the planet worse, and our economy worse, and the contradictions worse. The middle class is in trouble everywhere. The economy is now running into serious crises everywhere on the planet. This is going to be, we are headed for a global recession, very toxic, very nasty. And the global revanchisms have no solutions for these problems. My feeling is we're in the cusp of something big. We're in the cusp of a major change where we're getting a transnational progressive movement is going to emerge over the next year or so. Between 2019 and 2020, 
huge changes. And these are going to be the big changes. This isn't going to be a change of the discourse. This is going to be a change of governance structures and economies. Now, this is a complex issue. We'll have a lot more about this in future issues of Uplink, but just point out the tide is turning. 